Howdy once again and this is Tubal Cain with the first of several videos that I'm going to do on the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe that I recently bought and if you haven't seen uh, the video entitled Tubal Cain uh, buys an Atlas lathe at yet another estate auction part one and part two go ahead and watch that because that shows uh, the auction where I actually buy this and uh, and uh, set it up and show you the different attachments and everything that came with it but I've got the lathe cleaned up a little bit now so it's uh, presentable and ready to use and ready to use uh, to make videos and this is a nice machine because it's mounted on a cast iron base it's a 12 inch swing I'll show you the model number here in a second but you may recall that when I purchased this it came with a quick change gearbox and uh, I have taken that off for the purposes of this video because the main thing I want to show you is how to set up the gears and uh, the gear train the change gears uh, because most of you will probably have a lathe built like this without the gearbox but the gearbox went right here and I have taken it off and converted it back to the way this originally uh, was sold from Sears Roebuck and then in a later video in this series I'm going to reinstall it and show you that in detail and uh, get this back to uh, the uh, original way that uh, I purchased it because I prefer a quick change gearbox and it's always desirable but uh, it was expensive then and it's expensive now so uh, here we go here's the gearbox that I removed from the lathe and of course it came with a, a different guard and uh, converted it back and it also originally came with uh, this part sheet here which the mice had their way with as you can see but uh, this tells how to install that all the different parts and so on and uh, I'll show you that again in great detail later on uh, the plate came off in order to mount it there's two mounting bolts here and uh, this was I'll show it to you in the catalog probably about a hundred dollars back then which was equal to five or six hundred dollars now now if you do not have a copy of this try to find a copy this came with a later lathe but uh, it was available uh, for many years and uh, there was an older version of this also that didn't cover I believe the, the one with the quick change gearbox so get uh, get this because it really is handy for uh, all of the gear changes this is the model of this 12 inch lathe it's a Sears number uh, they made it in different models because there was different lengths and uh, uh, other things that changed the model number but that's the model number of this particular one and I do not have a catalog I just looked I thought I had a Sears catalog that uh, from the early 50s and mine was much newer so I don't have the catalog to show you what the original price was and the accessories and all of that but I like to cover uh, a few safety tips in every one of my videos and this uh, time these videos uh, will include uh, safety tips regarding the gear train not not general cutting but I just want to talk about the gear train now and uh, several things that you need to to think about when you're working on this and number one is when you're changing the gears there's only one way to do it and that is with the machine unplugged do not put your fingers near the gears or do any changing when the power is on and make sure your machine is grounded with a three prong plug another thing uh, when you're working around the lead screw uh, do not have a rag anywhere near it because what can sometimes happen is that the rag gets wrapped up if your hands on it it can uh, pull it in but I've seen these wrapped up so tight that it bends the lead screw so keep rags away from that when you're using it and then another thing when I was in high school I was taught to clean the lead screw and it might even show this in some books with a piece of string with the machine running and do not do this I'm telling you not to do it but we were just told make sure you don't wrap it around your hands like this hold it like this but that's no good either because it will get caught do not use string use a, a wire brush and solvent uh, or toothbrush or something like that to get everything 
out of the, uh, the threads because you do want the lead screw to be clean. Now a few general comments about uh, the gears on a craftsman lathe and uh, how to care for them and, uh, and so on. But uh, many people say uh, try to avoid the, when cutting allowing the chips to run all the way through here and then they fall out the backside by the gears. So in order to prevent that you can take a rag or a, a piece of a paper towel or even steel wool and if you shove that in there just a little ways, if you're not turning between centers, of course, that'll prevent the chips from migrating through. And I'll show you why on the other end. Be sure and keep the guards uh, on at all times and closed, and that's the belt guard, and this, of course, is the, is the gear guard. But what can happen is that the chips uh, eventually work their way out here, and then they fall into the gears, and the gears having oil on them, I've got them clean now, but the gears having oil or grease on them collect the chips, and uh, they get caught into the gears and cause uh, wear and binding and, uh, and uh, remove the gear clearance and all of that. So. Uh, 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 be sure and uh, and keep this area clean. Now, uh, in talking about the gears on a Craftsman lathe or an Atlas, they are made of an alloy called uh, Zamac. Now, that alloy that's a trademark name, but it stands for zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and kupfer. And kupfer is the German word for copper. So that is the alloy of these gears. What is the purpose of all the gears on a lathe? The purpose is to give you the correct uh, ratio between uh, the spindle speed or the number of turns of the spindle and the number of turns of the lead screw and that will determine the threads per inch that you're cutting if you're doing thread cutting or the speed of the feed for both the cross feed and the longitudinal feed. So it's necessary to change some of the gears in order to, to, uh, to get the speed that you want. It's so easy to do if you have a quick change gearbox but more complicated and that's the purpose of this video. Now inside the gear cover there's a chart. Now that chart's a little inconvenient to read and it's very small, but th there's a copy of that in the book or you can find them online so that you can have that in your hand uh, or you might have to use a flashlight or a magnifying glass to read it. But uh, that is the purpose of the gear train. Now there are sometimes you're not using gears at all and uh, in that case you put the feed reverse lever in the middle position and then none of the gears are running and that's a good idea if you're not doing a threading or uh, automatic feeding because it reduces the noise and saves the wear and tear on the gears. Why on earth did they die cast the gears you're thinking instead of giving us good cut ones like you're going to find on uh, the South Bend or the Logan or other lathes uh, uh, gears that are made of cast iron or, or cast steel or a more durable material well first of all this is a little more durable than you think but the real reason it was so much cheaper to do think of die casting one of these you know in a one shot ready to go maybe they had to trim it a little bit or clean it up but uh, to, to make a gear like this in, in 10 seconds instead of cutting it, which might take, uh, in the, even in the hobbing process, uh, you know, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, I'm not sure how long, but certainly longer than this. So it was a cheap way to do it. And it made Atlas Craftsman's lathes affordable for the masses. So that, that's why they did that. Uh, I haven't, have not had a, a problem with these uh, breaking, but they were available from Sears for a rather a modest price if you did have to replace them. And I think that some of these gears have never been used. But you'll notice that on every gear, if you get it clean enough, there is a number. For instance, that's a 30... Can't read it without my magnifier. I think it says 32 teeth. There. All of the Sears gears are also double keyed. I'm not sure why they do that, but double key, I suppose, uh, to prevent uh, breaking. There was some trouble with, uh, with these 
if they used impure zinc uh, where the, the zinc deteriorated. But I haven't witnessed that, but I've, I've heard uh, that uh, it is a problem. There's an extra uh, little arbor. And the gears are either single gears like this, or if they're put together, they're called compound gears. And you'll see that, that there is a, a bushing in there, a brass bushing or bearing on the compound gears. I may be off the subject here just a little bit, but most lathes had a system of a, of a shear pin or a clutch or something that in case there was binding, uh, you wouldn't strip a gear. And uh, the closing lathe used a, a little uh, shear pin here, just like a outboard motor. The later Atlas Craftsman, like the one that I've shown you in other videos, has some kind of little clutch right here that is a release mechanism. But on the older uh, lathes, what they have done is down here at this bearing, that is a sacrificial bearing. That is, if something jammed, the purpose of it was, was to break, literally uh, destroy that. And you can see when looking at uh, this extra one I have here, how lightly they were built, because they're die cast also. Maybe it's Zamac, I don't really know what that is. It's not aluminum because it's kind of heavy. But the idea was for this to break off, and then you would buy a new one, probably fairly cheap, but uh, certainly cheaper than uh, replacing gears or some other parts that might have got damaged or the half nut or uh, the, the lead screw itself. So that's why they were built so, so lightly. And I think you can still get these from Sears. Sears still offers uh, replacement parts for some of these lathes, and you can look that up on their website. Also, they're available, I believe, from Atlas Closing. One other safety thing that I want to mention, and it's certainly a, a rare thing, but sometimes the boys, when doing a long lathe operation in the high school, would set their foot up here. That's kind of, a, especially the taller kids, they'd set their, uh, their shoe right up here in order to rest just a little bit. And that was during that era when they wore those frayed blue jean cuffs. And I did have, in several cases, the, uh, the frayed blue jeans get caught in the lead screw and pull the leg in, but fortunately the kid had the, uh, the <coughs> good knowledge <coughs> and uh, thoughts to turn the machine off. But, you know, pull your leg in. In a blue jean material, denim is, is quite a tough material. It doesn't tend to tear. So do not put your foot up near the lead screw. I know what I'm telling you now is uh, rather elementary, and many of you know this, uh, but there are some uh, new viewers always, so that's why I'm giving this explanation. But again, the purpose of the whole gear train here is to transmit power at a certain rate between the headstock spindle, where the work is held, down through the gear train and into the lead screw, and then to move the carriage back and forth, or the cross slide in and out. So I'm turning the lathe on now. Watch the gears. I'm in forward. And I am turning the lead screw through this gear right here. Don't put your fingers anywhere near that. And notice that the lead screw is turning and the uh, carriage is moving. And it would be moving the uh, cutting tool into the work. Now using the feed change lever here, or the feed reverse lever, uh, this is the feed reverse lever. We always need to turn the machine off, but if I put this in the middle, that was in the down position. In the middle position, right there, that will be neutral. The gears are not turning, and if you're not doing any feeding, as I said before, use that, that position. Now if I move the feed reverse lever into the top position and sometimes you need to uh, wiggle a little bit to get the gears to mesh. Now when I turn the machine on the uh, carriage will be moving in the other direction.
And the entire system here allows me to uh, do that at a de uh, determined rate for either threading or feeding. Now probably 98% of the time when you're using a lathe you will not be threading, you will be feeding. But I'm going to show you uh, both ways uh, of doing it uh, and to start with talk more about threading a certain number of threads per inch or a certain pitch. Let's move the camera down to the uh, uh, carriage now and show you a few things right there in, in regards to what I'm talking about. The motor is running, the spindle is turning, and in order to uh, cause the carriage to move, the craftsman lathes do not have a clutch. We are using the half nut lever. And when I engage the half nut lever, you can see that the carriage is moving to the left, and of course, to go the other way, we have to uh, uh, move the feed uh, reverse lever. Now on the Craftsman lathe, the half nut lever is used for both threading and feeding. So it serves a dual purpose. If you want the uh, cross feed to move, the cross slide, there is a knob right under here. You can see it. It needs to be engaged. Right there. Now you can see that the cross feed is turning, and that's also controlled, or it is not controlled rather by the by the half nut lever. It is controlled strictly by this knob. And if you want it to feed in. Of course, the half nut lever or the uh, feed change lever is moved into the upper position. Do not leave the lathe unattended when you are feeding. And that's way too fast of a speed right now, and that's why we need to change the gear ratio on and off.